station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 4. Here's a look at today's top stories all across the DMV. Our top story today, we're hearing from the family of the woman of the woman hit and killed in a Georgetown University parking garage, what they're now saying about their sudden loss. And after after a bit of a stormy Thursday night, we are looking at beautiful conditions for this Friday. Do these conditions last through the weekend? We'll have a full check of your forecast in just a bit. And Commander's fans here at home and across the country celebrating a long awaited change in ownership today. We'll take you out to FedEx Field for the pep rally happening live. Thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 4 on this Friday. I'm Annalisa Gale. A beautiful Friday indeed. I'm Ben Dennis in for Mark Hall this afternoon. We'll get to those top stories in a minute, but first we start this Friday afternoon with a live look outside. A beautiful view of the National Cathedral. Yeah, let's get over to meteorologist Damon Matson. It was raining overnight, Damon, but it's drier now. I know, fantastic, finally. It was worth the wait. Yes, we went through some of those thunderstorms and showers overnight that made things a bit noisy. Might have woke some of you up to begin the day pretty early on, but it's just fantastic now as we roll on toward the start of the weekend. The one thing that is going on out there, well, we have the air moving around a bit. We have a northwest wind, 10 to 20 miles an hour. Hour. almost feels refreshing, if you will. We don't typically get breezy afternoons during the middle of the summer, but today we are getting just that as this cold front continues its track toward the East Coast. And for the most part now, it has cleared the DMV and we're starting to get more of that comfortable, drier air in behind this cold front with a pretty fantastic condition shaping up here for our Friday evening. And here we go, folks. We will still have a few few clouds in the sky, but it's going to turn rather clear as we head into the overnight hours. Temperatures will be slowly falling off, still going to feel decently warm out there for a summer night. But on top of that, the humidity is going to be dropping, so it's going to feel extremely comfortable as we head into the start of your Saturday and folks heading out the door tomorrow morning. Even it is not going to be all that mild. Still some upper 60s across the eastern half of the area. But as you go off to the west, upper 50s and low 60s can be found across our western counties. That is crisp for this time of year. Now, as we go into Saturday and Sunday, is it going to start to warm back up? We'll have that check of your forecast coming up in just a bit. Because I don't invest in sports teams to just for ego. I invest to win. We'll see if it happens. A new era for the Washington Commanders football franchise. The new ownership group speaking at FedEx Field just a few hours ago, led by DC native Josh Harris and, as you saw, NBA legend Magic Johnson, who we just heard from. Yeah, it's an exciting day. They'll now take over for now former owner Dan Snyder, who sold the team for roughly $6 billion. Snyder originally bought the team back in 1999 for $800 million. But Snyder's legal troubles do not end now that he's no longer leading this franchise. Immediately after that vote yesterday, investigators with the league releasing details of a report finding that Snyder sexually harassed former cheerleader and marketing employee Tiffany Johnston. He was fined $60 million. However, the investigation did not uncover whether or not Snyder was directly involved in with withholding money from other team executives. Yeah, plenty of headlines there, but as we said, fans got a chance for their uh, new primary owner of the team, DMV native Josh Harris. Our Alex Flum is live at FedEx Field, where a pep rally is going on right now. And Alex, you got to hear from some big names there earlier this afternoon. Yeah, Annalisa and Ben, that's exactly right. Yesterday we were at the party. Today we were at the official introduction. It's really setting in. It feels real. This whole new ownership group came in here to FedEx Field. They had their introductory press conference. Obviously, Josh Harris leading the way there. Mitchell Rails, another owner in that group, another local of this area. Mark Ein, another one, the big name as well. Again, as you guys mentioned, Magic Johnson. Lots of big names coming in there. Legendary Super Bowl, three-time Super Bowl winning coach Joe Gibbs was here. Other legends, Daryl Green, Doug Williams. Lots of big names, big faces. And the big thing for Josh Harris is he remembers those legends. He is from Chevy Chase, Maryland in Montgomery County. He grew up rooting for this team 
watching their games down in D.C., and he reminisced on that moment as he took the stage as the commander's owner for the first time earlier today. One of my first memories was walking down East Capitol Street uh, with the rest of the fans, going into RFK Stadium, uh, hearing the crowd, feeling the rumbling of the stadium, and it really had an indelible mark on me as a human being. This franchise is a part of who I am and who I became. Our work begins today, and I'm so excited to be on this journey together with the city. And a big day for Josh Harris and his entire ownership group. Josh Harris actually went to elementary school with Mark Ein along the ownership group as well. Mitchell Rails talked about what it meant to grow up in this area and root for this team. And now all of them to be owners of this team. They addressed the fans just moments ago. You could see Josh Harris high five and fans in the front row. That's not something I don't think we saw from Dan Snyder in a 24 year span very much. So uh, a new era, a big change and a lot of excitement here at FedEx Field. At five o'clock, we'll talk about what the priorities are, what this team is gonna be addressing. You will not wanna miss that. But for now, Annalisa and Ben, I'm gonna send things back to you guys in studio. Alex, thank you. Right now, D.C. police are investigating an overnight shooting at the Fort Totten Metro Station in Northeast. Transit police say a group of people were fighting. One person tried to pull out a gun, but it fell to the ground. A teenager picked up that gun and shot a man. We're told that a teen and a special police officer shot at one another, and the officer struck the armed teenager before chasing him out of the metro station. And commuters arriving to the station told us that they were frustrated when they had to find an alternative transportation plan. Yet again, meantime, people living in the area say that they are just sick of this gun violence. Every time you look around, some somebody getting shot somewhere. It's very concerning that something like this will happen where people will travel to work every day, travel to school, travel to run their errands, and, and plus it's close to my neighborhood and my neighbor's neighborhood and where we live. And we're told D.C. police will be leading the investigation in this case, which they say is standard for shootings involving special police officers. And new this afternoon, a deadly hit and run near the Shelton Shopping Center in Charles County. Sheriff's deputies responded just after midnight this morning where they found a man dead on Crane Highway in La Plata. He's been identified as 34 year old Brian Eric Allen Jr. And the sheriff's office believes Allen may have been hit by a large box truck or tractor trailer. Turning back to the district now, developing now, we're learning new details about a deadly car accident inside a MedStar Georgetown Hospital parking garage. We're told 68-year-old Jewel Basilio Belgard was at the hospital for a routine doctor's appointment and waiting for her car when she was killed. Our Leonard N. Fleming spoke to her husband and her only daughter this afternoon. Now, Leonard, what are you learning about her? Annalisa, the family tells me Jewel just retired in March and was looking forward to spending time with her two young grandchildren. Vacation travel around the world was also in the works. Now the family is planning a funeral. And the driver are still unclear, but we do know the person behind the wheel was in an Audi SUV and barreled into several people in the parking garage of the MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. The crash tragically killed Jewel of Silver Spring, Maryland. Her family says she worked as a senior advisor uh, for an HIV AIDS uh, at a Federal Resources Service Administration building. Her daughter, Gabriella, told me her mother was her best friend and close confidant. We know one day we have to lose our parents, but I guess I assumed or thought I'd have time to say goodbye, like it'd be an illness, it'd be something like that. Um, never did I imagine something so sudden or violent. No charges have been filed yet with the unidentified driver and the crash remains under investigation. Guys. And Leonard, you also talked to her husband. They were married for 37 years. What is he saying? Well, Annalisa, Serge Belgard is in shock. He told me he was at a funeral when he got the call that his wife had been in an accident. We will have more from our interview with him tonight on DC News Now. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in uh, later newscast. Reporting from the studio, Leonard and Fleming. DC News Now, back to you. Leonard, thank you for that reporting. In Northern Virginia, the Burke community is shaken after a driver hit a car full of teenagers 
and killing a 17-year-old girl, badly injuring three of her others. It happened along Burke Center Parkway. Yeah, Rebecca Zarco is now being remembered as a beautiful, smart, and caring daughter. And there's now a community push to make that stretch of road even safer. DC News Now's Haley Mylon is at the site with the latest details. More than 1,000 community members have signed a petition to put a stoplight here at the intersection where the crash happened. The community deeply mourning the loss of the 17 year old girl and pulling for the three other teens who were in the car with her, including her younger brother. And everybody's saying, why her? She was so kind. She had so much ahead of her. Classmates, family and friends mourning a sweet soul taken too soon. Three other teens, including Zarko's younger brother, are fighting for their lives in the hospital. Police are still investigating the crash, but they say the speed of the car that struck the teens is a big factor. That driver is also in the hospital. The crash comes as Fairfax County Police cracked down on dangerous driving through its Road Shark program, issuing nearly 6,000 citations during the third wave of the program between July 10th and July 16th. But the police crackdown isn't enough for some as a petition to install a stoplight at the crash intersection garners support. It's very dangerous. I've been nearly hit. They do speed along there. Pat Jasechik lives nearby. She says there are already several lights. How many lights can you have at any shopping center? But she still thinks another light is needed. Having a light turning, especially to the to the left is always better. You support a light there? Oh, absolutely, 100%. It should definitely be put in and rather overdue. A funeral service and memorial is planned for Zarco on July 29th. In Burke, I'm Haley Mylon, DC News Now.